Hi everyone and welcome to week three of Introduction to Data, Data Integrity and how data is used every day. Data integrity is talking about the accuracy of the data. So one of the big issues that we can have with data is making sure that the data is both accurate and stored correctly. This could also include the completeness of the data and making sure that we are storing all of the information. We can look at it as the data storage, making sure that the hard drive is working properly, backed up, things like that. This can also be the guidelines for data retention or how long you can keep data. So data integrity and accuracy of the data is actually a really big issue because when we are doing things like, for example, cleaning the data, we may end up seeing that if we have inaccurate data and we have to pull too many records or redo things, that can actually end up creating huge issues when we're in the processing stage. So if we have inaccurate data, we are likely to make inaccurate conclusions and therefore we will not be able to sort of make good choices. It's like if we go back to the budgeting example and you think you have $1,000 coming in from your job, but it turns out you only have $700 coming in. That accuracy of the data is a huge problem. That is going to really affect where your money is going to be able to be spent this month. Some examples of data integrity. So complete data. One of the things that can happen, especially in businesses, when we are processing data, we are likely to use some variety of a program or algorithm to help us process the data. Programs and algorithms fundamentally aren't very bright and we have to be very specific with them. So if we're looking at something and we see Tolkien instead of J.R.R. Tolkien, that's not going to show up as being by the same author. So you're going to say, you know, have the Lord of the Rings trilogy and then you're going to have the Silmarillion. And instead of having them show up as both being in there with J.R.R. Tolkien as the author, they're going to show up differently. So you might say, oh, well, how many books do I have by Tolkien and get a different result than how many books do I have by J.R.R. Tolkien? You know, the difference in your account between $1,000 and 30 cents versus 900 ish dollars. Um, healthcare records. Healthcare records are huge on data integrity. Um, healthcare in general has to have a whole bunch of different checks and balances to make sure that the data is as complete as can be. So for example, if you have a record and it says there are allergies, but it doesn't list the allergies, that might be accurate data, but it is not complete data. And it's really important to have that complete data. You know, being awarded financial aid and being awarded the a, a specific amount of financial aid is also not the same. Accurate data. Um, Let's say, for example, I'm keeping track of all of my books. Um, if you've ever, you know, sort of met me in person, at even at least once, you know that I'm reading all the time. Um, accurate data, keeping track of the authors. So if you have somebody who writes down Tolkien instead of J.R.R. Tolkien, it's not the same amount, but like, you know, we might be able to work it. But if they're just like, yeah, my dude talks, like, who is going to realize that's Tolkien? Nobody. That's who. Um, another example of accurate data. $1,000 in the account. Approximately $1,000 is not the same thing as exactly $1,034.56. If you have to have a careful budget, those extra $34 make a difference to you. Um, another accuracy thing for data. Healthcare record says there's an allergy, marks the allergy as pomegranate, meant penicillin. Let me assure you, those are not the same thing. And uh, having an allergy marked in a record that is 
incorrect is a huge, huge problem for a patient. Um, you know, you are awarded tuition for financial aid. The difference of a single zero, $2,000 in tuition and $20,000 in tuition. That's a single zero and that makes a big difference. Now we can have incorrect data and we can have badly organized data. They aren't necessarily the same. Incorrect data would be, you know, a wrong allergy written down or a wrong transcript was sent or um, your coffee was not $4, it was $40. Uh, you know, somebody asked for a birthday and you looked at them and smiled and said, blue. Um, you know, that's, that's all wrong data. Badly organized data is also wrong, but it's wrong in a different way. So if we have something that's badly organized, well, you know, we could have a cultural difference, the order of year, month, day, month, year, day. Um, or, you know, for example, I'm saying, what's your birthday? And you say January, but I was actually looking for, you know, 1970, but you didn't include the year. That, you know, that could be correct data, but not necessarily put in correctly. And it's not well organized because I also didn't really know what I was asking for and you didn't really know what to tell me. Um, data that doesn't correspond to what was asked for or odd organization methods. For example, um, if we're asking for a first name and a last name, the order that they're in matters. That again can have cultural issues, but that organization of data will be important. Odd organizational methods can also be important. You know, if I'm, for example, organizing a library database and I'm trying to keep track of all of the books that are in the library, most people are going to think author, ISBN, date published, title. However, let's say I decided I wanted to organize my books by word count. Technically, you can do that. I don't know why you'd want to, but you could. Um, or book weight. I've decided to go and weigh all of my books. I'm really in the mood for a four ounce book today. Technically, I could. Badly organized and weird, but I, I technically could do it. Now, data can be more complex than you're thinking. So I always use names as an example, um, partially because you may or may not have what's considered an odd name wherever you happen to live. Um, but you can look at my name and see that it's an odd name. So for example, you might think names are easy. First name, last name, there we go, now we're done. But what if it's last name, first name, and it's a culture that traditionally has the last name before the first name, and that's how it's organized and written everywhere. What if there are multiple names? What if the culture happens to include some variety of, uh, you know, middle name or third or Vaughn or, you know, something like that? Short names. Maybe you are expecting a particular length of name. Maybe you're expecting a shorter name instead of a longer name. You know, um, it's perfectly reasonable to have last names that are one letter, two letters. It's perfectly reasonable to have last names that are 20 letters, and it just depends on where you are in the world. Hyphenated names. There are some times where hyphenated names, um, you know, I, I happen to know this because I have a hyphenated name. Some systems will take out the hyphen. Some systems will only do the first one. Some systems will only do the second. Some systems will treat the first name as a middle name. Some systems will um, delete one of them without letting you know. Those are all sort of issues that you have to think of when we're collecting our data. So if you're expecting you know, a specific type of name, um, just think about what it is that you're collecting. Um, another example is names that are simple. Uh, names that have non-letter characters. So that could be hyphens, that could be apostrophes. Um, you know, that's perfectly reasonable. It's perfectly reasonable to have letters and names that are not in the English language. And you have to account for all of those. That's why data tends to be more complex. You can't just think of it as name, text, you know, five characters here, five characters there. There's a lot more that goes into it for something as simple as, hi, what's your name? 
Now, some examples on how to collect data well. One of the first and foremost things is that you have a clear plan that is written down in a clear way, identifying what you need and how it's being measured, all in clear and hard to misinterpret language. You have to decide if you are collecting quantitative or qualitative data. You have to have a system with procedures and you have to test everybody going out collecting the data before you officially send them out. For example, um, qualitative data, how are you feeling today? I feel good today. Quantitative data, on a scale of 1 to 10, how are you feeling today? Have a clear system. When you are asking people how they are feeling today, are you expecting anything in particular? Um, how are you measuring that? Do you have like a particular, you know, when you ask them, are you smiling? Are you not smiling? What time of day are you asking? Um, who is asking? All of those specific procedural questions have to be written down and then make sure that everybody that's collecting the data is all doing it in the exact same way to make sure that you are collecting your data well. Cleaning data is how we go about fixing what we've got. This is where we can remove duplicate data, we can fix incorrect data, we can fix formatting. Data cleaning, this is an important note, Keep a copy of your original data. You may be very confident that everything's going well. You may be very confident in what you're doing. You may be very confident in your program or that you are visually inspecting it or whatever. Um, don't be. Make sure that you are doing all of your data cleaning on a different piece of data. Make a copy. Hard drives are cheap make a copy of your data before you clean it. Keep a copy of your original. Um, do not ever, 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 ever manipulate your original data and do anything to it without keeping a copy of the original somewhere. At some point, have a copy, have a backup. I do not know enough ways to emphasize have a backup of everything, especially all of your data. Okay. Quality and validity matters. Make sure your data makes sense. Um, just, you know, give a quick visual inspection. If you have even a thousand records, pull out 10 of them randomly and make sure that they visually make sense to you and that things are going well. Um, one of the reasons that we'll usually start on smaller pieces of data instead of going right for the, you know, million lines of data is because we want to be able to check that everything is going the way that we think it's going to be going. We clean data so that we can get better results. If we have a lot of duplicates, then we are going to have worse results than if we didn't. Um, if we had bad data or bad formatting, that's going to give us worse results. You know, if we're trying to look at ratings for coffee and we have a thousand people that we've asked to rate our coffee beans. If we've asked the same person five times to rate our coffee beans or we ask, you know, everybody that comes into the coffee shop every single day to rate the coffee beans, well, we may end up with a lot of duplicate data. Maybe we accidentally put somebody inside the coffee shop and outside the coffee shop and we actually duplicated everybody for that day. You know, getting rid of that duplicate data or fixing the incorrect data is going to make for better information later. Um, some examples. We might see NA and non-applicable. They mean the same, so we could group them together. So if we were trying to visualize our data, we could put both NA and non-applicable in the same section of our chart graph, whatever. Now, as a note, cleaning data can include potentially getting rid of outliers. Outlier is not the same as incorrect. Your definition of outlier is not the same as somebody else's. Don't ruin your data for a goal and don't ruin your data for a personal opinion. Data is not about personal opinions. Data doesn't care what you think about that. 
some examples of how data is cleaned. Um, we may end up cleaning up our data by removing duplicates. We may end up cleaning up our data by only looking at specific ranges. You know, maybe it makes sense to collect all of the data for the coffee shop reviews, but we are actually going to clean our data by looking at age ranges or locations and sort of picking out pieces of that data. We might clean up by fixing typos. Maybe we are updating naming conventions, um, making sure that it's all the same format. You know, when we are asking for our ratings, we have to make sure that everything is all in the same format and organized. We might look at it um, and check validity doesn't make sense. So we might have part of data cleaning being, we asked for a name, we got a date, we asked for a birthday, we got a color, um, and trying to go see how we might be able to go about fixing that. And fixing that is part of how we clean data. AI is actually getting used to clean data more and more. If you are sitting here thinking, wow, data cleaning sounds really tedious, boy is it ever. Um, and so whenever we can make a computer do that instead of us, 100% on board for that. So. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are being used to clean data. Why would I want to go through a thousand or a million lines of something hand by hand when I could just go assign a computer to do it for me? Um, it, anyway, I wouldn't, but I guess if you want to, you do you. Um, we use programs to clean the data. We might write our own program. We might uh, use somebody else's. We might have a tool that we're using. New advances in technology are actually including AI that will do this for us. So for example, um, AWS has some tools for that. Google has a tool for that for their Google Sheets. It's called AI Validator. Um, and basically what you can actually do is use these tools or programs that somebody else did to go through and look for duplicates, uh, incorrect, things that don't match, stuff like that. Now, I have used this example picture um, for machine learning because I would like to remind everybody, machine learning is not a magic wand. This picture, um, if you are looking at it, happens to be of both chihuahuas and blueberry muffins. Machine learning cannot always distinguish between a chihuahua and a blueberry muffin. Most of the time humans can, I think, but um, it's just, it's a good reminder that machine learning and artificial intelligence, not a magic wand. Data is important to every job. Good data will lead us to better choices. All businesses do run on data to some extent. Um, some will run on more data. Uh, you know, for example, uh, a local pizza place may run on less data. They may keep track of, you know, uh, sales, when sales are popular, uh, how many people need to be working, how many supplies they need to order. They're not going to run on data the same way, for example, a social media company would. Some businesses like social media companies are going to collect and run off of significantly more data because when they are moving the needle on something, it's a small change can have a much bigger impact. You know, um, a small local pizza place maybe is selling a thousand pizzas a day. You know, maybe, maybe it's a hundred pizzas a day, whatever it happens to be. Um, a social media company might have five million people going to the site every day. That's a really big difference. And so they are naturally going to be collecting and working with a lot more data and more efficiency, improving quality, sucking more money out of people. Um, all of those decisions and choices are going to be based off of the data that is being collected. Now, some examples of how data is used in jobs well. We could predict some future sales. Uh, what do we want to stock in our store? What are some market trends that we think are going to happen? What type of goods do we think are going to be popular next week, next month, next year? Healthcare will actually use data. Um, one of the things that they'll do is use it to see failures in the system. Um, it's kind of slash super depressing, but like if you look at healthcare mistakes, which they do a lot, um, 
all of those mistakes is data that they can use to try to make the mistakes happen less often. You know, a good example of this is a lot of doctors' offices have started having um, basically checklists. And so if you go into the doctor's office for any more serious procedures, they'll actually go through a pretty extensive checklist with you. Um, and every single person that you see will go through the checklist with you. And they found that doing that can actually reduce uh, adverse outcomes, which basically means complications and not good ones. Um, and so you'll notice that, like, for example, if you go to a doctor's office, they'll probably ask for your name and birthday. And every single person that you see is going to ask for a name and birthday just to make sure that they are talking to the right person because, you know, your medical records are not going to look like my medical records. And so that's some examples of how data can be used really well. And so, like, those to be able to help the business make more money or help more people or have less adverse outcomes in healthcare. Those are all examples of data being used well. Um, data being used poorly. So uh, I'm going to pick on Amazon for a minute here. Amazon warehouse efficiency and driver efficiency has led to some uh, really dangerous situations, you know, and there's been examples of people being in trouble or having problems because the efficiency of the warehouse has been more important than the people running it. You know, um, if you are trying to make sure that, you know, I don't know, five boxes are packed every minute and they've decided that they could fit in six, you know, that can lead to mistakes and injuries, especially with heavy equipment. Um, you know, there was a huge scandal about delivery drivers uh, going to the bathroom in the vans because they literally did not have the time to do that during the day because of the schedule that they were put on and the algorithm that decided where they should be going didn't factor that in. You know, just like maybe it didn't factor in traffic. Um, laying off people because the data says they don't make money. Um, example, so this isn't exactly data being used poorly, but the Mars Climate Orbiter um, actually ended up being a failure. It did not do the test that it was supposed to because of an issue with the data that was in there. The software didn't convert the data to metric. Um, there was an imperial versus metric issue. And so all of the money that was spent on that was basically wasted. Um, the 2008 housing crash was bad data. The data said that, you know, pieces of market were worth more than they were. When it was found out that those pieces of the market were not worth as much as they were worth, the economy ended up having problems. Now, to be fair, there's a lot of things happening, subprime mortgages, there was a whole issue there, and I'm not saying there wasn't, but some of that was bad data being collected. Um, you know, Unity getting bad data and the audience guessing tool, and they basically lost a whole bunch, I think it was ad revenue, because they didn't do their ad revenue properly. Those are some examples of data that was not used correctly or not cleaned correctly, or not processed correctly, or conclusions that were made from the data just weren't accurate. So that's the end of week three. I hope that was helpful, and I hope you are all having a lovely day.